Good morning, dear friends. Good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome to the Capricorn Solar Festival webinar with the 2025 initiative. My name is Alexander and I welcome you on behalf of the 2025 initiative coordination group. As we gather today in the first day of the five-day period of approach to the hierarchy, we come together for sharing and reflection on how we take our responsibility working with the hierarchy and with the unfolding plan. Today, our guests, Nancy Seifer and Martin Vuick, and the members of their group who will be sharing with us and lead us in the meditation. And I invite now Michael Linfield to lead us in alignment. Greetings, dear friends. A few words of framing to create a shared context before we move into our opening alignment. Our various spirit tradition, traditions and teachings tell us of the evolutionary journey of the earth in becoming a sacred planet. And the sacred planet can be said to be one that has fully blossomed and revealed the indwelling beauty of its purpose, promise and potential. It's a journey from one state of wholeness to a more expanded state of wholeness. For our planetary life to reach its next level of wholeness, right relations need to be established between and among the various energy centers of its incarnated self. Connection, coherence, communion, and cooperation are keynotes of this stage of the path. And as we all know, we live and move and have our being within the greater life of our planet. And as Gaia moves through her spiritual systems upgrade, all of its centers of consciousness are invited to raise their frequencies and to come into alignment with a new note of purpose. And as members of the fourth realm, we humans are very much part of this upgrade and this movement towards greater synthesis. So we'll be using some familiar terms, and yet I'd like us to step beyond the labels into the living experience of what they represent. We know that humanity represents the throat center, hierarchy the heart center, and Shambhala the head center. And then we as the planetary server function as the Ajna center. So for planetary wholeness to occur, all the various energy centers need to be in communion and resonant relations. And we are being asked to take responsibility for one of these connections by establishing closer cooperation between the fourth and the fifth, the human realm and the realm of souls. We know this realm as our elder brothers and sisters. We're being invited to meet and merge. And finally, our earth is also being embraced and guided by its elder brothers and sisters who are the sacred planets of the solar systems. So we are lives within lives within lives, part of this continuous revelation of the great mystery. So with those truths reverberating, let us begin our meditation by breathing gently together. We synchronize our breaths, conspiring as a joyful band of sisters, 
and brothers. And from the breath, we become aware of the heartbeat and we bring our focus into the heart center and stand within the pulsing fire of love that burns as its center. And we connect heart to heart to heart. And as we synchronize our breath and our heart beats, we sense ourselves to be active participants in a pulsing, breathing planet from the dense physical to the most refined frequencies of beingness. So standing within the group heart, we bring ourselves into resonant relationship with the dynamic vortex of solar fire that we know as the heart center of the planetary life that radiates love and wisdom. And we step into it, we merge with it and it with us. we come into resonance with that planetary vortex of compelling electric fire that is the head center, wherein burns the monadic flame that is the promise and purpose of our planetary life. And we allow it to live in us and we in it. And we bring ourselves into deeper communion with the fire of creative intelligence that burns at the heart of our humanity, that forms the planetary throat center. We enter this creative vortex and stand in the livingness of its divine function. And we see the triangle of these three centers vibrating and circulating the life of the planet. We are part of this circulation. So now together we enter the living silence, bringing ourselves into resonance with the whole planetary life, affirming that as the planetary server, 
we are the life of the Logos incarnating in time and space. And coming out of the silence, we bring with us a deep knowing that we are Gaians, integral and intimate aspects of a planetary being undergoing initiation inside the solar family of lives. And we allow this reality and this awareness to register inside the group mind, the group feeling body, and within the blood and bones of the group physical vehicle. As we stand together as the living planet. Thank you, Michael, for that inspiring presentation of the greater context in which we are working today. And thanks to Alexander and the 2025 initiative for offering us the opportunity to share a group experience of cooperation with the hierarchy. It's good to be coming together now in the aura of the great downpour of light that began a week ago with the solstice and conjunction, moving us further and further into Aquarius. Martin and I will launch today's program. Then a group of coworkers will share their reflections about our experience. That will be followed by a dialogue open to all webinar participants and we'll end with the meditation. Today, we want to tell you a story about an ashramic experiment that began four years ago and is ongoing. This is the first time we will speak about it publicly. The goal of the experiment was to turn a group of disciples scattered around the world on different continents most of whom had never met, into a cohesive working force that could carry out a task on behalf of the ashram of Master Moria. We knew in a general sense that the purpose was to bring light into a darkening world, to offset the growing sense that the world was ending with the reality that a divine plan is unfolding and that a new world is being born within the awakening soul of humanity. For the first two years of our group life, we didn't know what the task was. We only knew that the ashram wanted to form a group of reliable co-workers. Our guidance urged us repeatedly to suspend doubt and allow the light of the soul to discern what was true and real. We were urged to go beyond concepts about the hierarchy and open to the inner realities being presented to us. Over time, we created a field of love and trust 
learning to live as souls in the midst of a rapidly collapsing external world. One of the first things made clear to us was that groups of disciples are urgently needed by the hierarchy as co-workers to help implement the plan. Not in the distant future, but now. We were being prepared to accept responsibility as a group for bringing an aspect of the plan into manifestation. In essence, we were being guided toward the goals of the discipleship path as stated by the Tibetan master, to serve humanity, the hierarchy and the plan in cooperation with those most responsible for the plan. With that context in mind, I'd like to share a little of the background. In 2013, an open letter to disciples was issued by the first Ray Ashram. It was a call to attune to the imminence of the externalization of the hierarchy. It stated that there was a critical need for humanity to awaken to higher realities, a need that could only be filled by disciples aware of these realities. That call led to several initiatives, including the Living Discipleship Initiative, and culminated in the experiment we'll tell you about now. In the fall of 2016, another call went out. This time it was to form a group disciple. Guidance indicated the necessity to transform ageless wisdom teachings from an object of study into a guidebook for living in the world as conscious disciples, willing to accept responsibility for a part of the plan. For the first two years, our teachings focused mainly on creating a loving group field to nurture the flowering of the soul. As the experience deepened and the group expanded, we realized we were building a living bridge between humanity and the hierarchy. Early in 2019, the specific purpose for forming this group was revealed and it came as a shock to most of us. The assignment was to cast seeds of light into a dying world civilization by spreading memes on the internet. We were to take key esoteric principles and build bridges of understanding to souls who were awakening to subtler realities. This bridging work had to be done by people with some esoteric knowledge who could encapsulate higher truths in a few words and in simple language. So there we were, a group of older people for the most part, many of whom were computer phobic and had no interest or involvement in social media. We had no idea what a meme was and had to do research to come up with a definition. To accomplish our task, we had to be willing to enter a steep learning curve in a sphere of life that was foreign to many of us. It fell to our younger members to tutor us in computer technology and social media platforms, but quickly through a collective act of will we formed teams and jumped in. As it turned out, the content of our memes revolves around three truths that the Tibetan master had said were essential for humanity to grasp. He said that these three truths had to, quote, condition human awareness, end quote, if we were to avert total destruction. Number one was the world of the soul, the reality of the world of the soul. Two, the existence of the spiritual hierarchy, the inner government of the planet. And three, the existence of a divine plan. 
We worked this out intuitively, but in line with the Tibetan's guidance to disciples to modify, qualify, and adapt esoteric principles in order to create a bridge of understanding to wider audiences. There are now thousands of memes on our website over 1,200 in English and thousands more in other languages. We'd like to show you a sampling of some of the more recent ones. We learned that of equal importance to the creation and spread of memes was the coalescence of the group's soul, which occurred through working out this assignment together and meeting online periodically. To do this, we also had to find ways to transcend a language barrier as a number of us speak only Italian. All along the way, love flowing from the ashram has increasingly infused the group soul, turning us into a unified organism and creating an unbreakable bond. In a few minutes, a small group will share their reflections on the impact of our experience. In conclusion, I'd like to make a few points about the inner side of our spiritual journey. To accomplish our task, a large group of people had to be willing to go through a process of purification and transformation. To do the work, we had to be willing to learn things we didn't know. Most important was learning to transform our little human wills into a collective instrument of higher purpose. By the middle of 2019, we managed to get hold of the assignment and launched an anonymous website called New Waves of Light. By some miracle, one of our coworkers was a professional web designer 
and created a beautiful functional site that became the anchoring point for bringing our memes and other creative works into the world. Teams were formed around different functions, such as writing memes, translating them, clothing them in beauty, distributing them, and more recently, creating videos about them with them. For the past year and a half, many of us have worked tirelessly, totally voluntarily, to create a continuous stream of memes like the ones you've just seen. They now exist in 11 languages, with the largest collections in English, Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, and French. They're all on the New Waves of Light website to be shared, along with many inspired stories, poems, artworks, and essays that reflect the awakening consciousness of the soul as we enter into the age of the soul. The opportunity to share this story with you was unexpected, as our work until now has been done in strict confidentiality and total anonymity. If you visit our website, you'll see no names attached to any of the work. Today, we are lifting the veil of secrecy in order to expand the collective awareness of what is possible to achieve as a group working in cooperation with the hierarchy. As we know, it is this cooperation between the fourth and fifth kingdoms that will bring about the new world that we all long for, the new heaven and the new earth that will arise in the age of Aquarius. Thank you. And now, Martin will share some thoughts with all of you. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. And thanks to everybody who has come to hear what we have to say and see these beautiful memes. This section is called The Seeds of Light. The Tibetan master, Jual Kul, tells us that the world teacher, the great Lord of Life, as he calls him, may reappear on earth in three possible ways. An actual physical coming, an overshadowing of his disciples, or the coming of a tremendous inflow of the Christ principle, the Christ life and love working out through the human family. He goes on to say, perhaps all three possibilities may be found simultaneously on our planet very shortly. This last statement with the words very shortly was, was first published in 1936 in the time between the two world wars. As to what would happen at the time, the Tibetan simply said, it is not for us to say. It is for us to be ready and for us to work at preparing the world for that significant series of events. The immediate future will show. It has been over 80 years since these words first came to print. The immediate future has come and gone and there has been a conspicuous delay in the unfoldment of the plan. Yet there is evidence now that the period of delay is ending and the original plan for the reappearance of the world teacher and his group of co-workers is being revitalized, modified, qualified, and adapted, as Nancy has mentioned given fresh impetus to meet the requirements of the time. These signs, these happenings in the world that indicate 
something significant is happening here are of two kinds, described by the Tibetan more than eight decades ago. He wrote, the point I seek to make is that this inflow of the Christ spirit of love, whether it comes through a person in bodily form or through his felt and realized presence will again be twofold in its effect. This is a hard saying for the unthinking and the illogical. Both the good and the evil man will be stimulated. Both material desire and spiritual aspiration will be awakened and fostered. Evil in this context refers to missing the mark or more precisely, continuing to pursue behavior that long ago should have been left behind. This evil is all around us. The world as we once knew it is collapsing. And whether we point to the pandemic, to political corruption, to unbridled violence or to rampant greed, whatever version of evil misbehavior we choose to identify, few among us would deny that the selfish, material-minded men and women of our time have been stimulated by something of tremendous power, something much greater than themselves. They are driven in their ignorance to defend at all costs their worldly, separative, and selfish ways, to retain their present place in the world. That is the bad news. It reveals for all to see the response of the blind and the ignorant to the presence of Christ and his ashram, drawing near, now approaching the earth. It shows the resistance of the entrenched and established to inevitable change. The good news is that people of goodwill around the globe, resonant to the will of the will too good, issuing from on high, are standing together with massed intent, calling upon humanity, the one human family awakening from sleep to protect the environment, to feed the hungry, to provide for the needy, to serve the greater good. Disciples among us, overshadowed by the Christ presence, are responding to this powerful force in a more conscious way, in a positive way. They hear the call and are working together in group formation to discover their part in the one work, their role in the unfolding plan. This coming together in groups, in service to others, was predicted by the Tibetan who understood the nature of the coming age, whose keynote, whose keynotes are service and giving all for the greater good. It is the natural impulse of individuals who are in touch with the soul to join forces for the common good in preparation for the age of the soul. Working together towards a shared goal demonstrates what the Tibetan calls a life response to the presence of the Christ spirit and his ashram of light. This life response stands in stark contrast to the form response of people who cling to the dying past Awakening souls who respond in a living way to the call of the soul are leading us into a positive future for us all. Group experiments in discipleship living, such as ours, were predicted decades ago, and our experiment called the Circle of Living Discipleship is but one example of members of the new group of world servers coming together in the spirit of Aquarius. What then? is the spirit of Aquarius.
Aquarius, as students of the ageless wisdom may know, is associated with the heart and with life more abundantly. The life thread or sutratma, the thread of atma, is anchored in the heart, just as the thread of soul consciousness is anchored in the head. The discipleship ruler of Aquarius, the water bearer, the one who bears the water of life for awakening humanity, is Jupiter, the second ray planet of love. Jupiter is said to be the agent of the Christ spirit, conveying the energy of expansion that leads disciples on the way of return from ordinary living to the extraordinary expanded life of discipleship, empowering those who attune to it to find their place in the unfolding plan in service to the good. The grand conjunction between Jupiter, the agent of the spirit of Christ, and Saturn, the great Lord of Karma, which just occurred, most certainly has had a positive impact on disciples in the world, quickening the process of integration and soul alignment in their lives, accelerating the shift to a consciousness more resonant with the spirit of Aquarius, preparing us to be of greater service in the coming cycle. Humanity as a whole is undergoing a test in this difficult time, but it is all part of a phased release from old ways of going about that we might embrace the new. The new consciousness that awaits us will be an expression of love wisdom. And Jupiter, the agent of the second ray of love, is fostering love within the worldwide group. You can see it everywhere. And important to note, as the Tibetan tells us, Jupiter governs the fusion of heart and mind, which is the subjective purpose of manifestation. Let me repeat that. Jupiter governs the fusion of heart and mind, which is the subjective purpose of all manifestation. This should be a comforting thought for members of our circle and other groups such as ours, because it describes pretty accurately our experience as a group over the past four years, at least as I have come to see it. Surely we have known each other in, in the past, in previous lifetimes, no doubt about it. We have come together now to experiment in building a group disciple, a living group disciple, to create together a living link between the approaching brotherhood of light and awakening humanity. We are attempting, as we grow together and learn from one another, to fulfill a role within the new group of world servers. We are called into shared service in this troubled time of transition into the new age. And we have heeded the call, each of us of our own free will. In practical day-to-day -day experience, we have received guidance, gathered in groups, held online discussions, meditated together, and worked freely and cooperatively, practically and effectively on a shared group project. Our task in brief has been to vitalize or energize the planetary mind and heart with seeds of light, love, and hope. To the best of our ability, we are spreading memes of light, and if all goes according to plan, this effort will engender new waves of light in the world and bring lasting change for the good. Over the years, we have gained experience in living and working together simply by collaborating on shared projects centered in the group purpose, revealed to us with each new phase of the work given by inner guides, and it has required adjustment on everyone's part. Decentralization of the little self and listening in a heartfelt way to one another. 
By immersing ourselves in the love of the group and by taking personal responsibility for our part in the task at hand, by eliminating the need for personal recognition, by working anonymously, by giving all that we have to give, we have trodden the path together and have grown together as a group. Over time, we have moved from group experiment to group experience. We know what it's like to work together as a group in service to the plan, all in preparation for the final stage, group expression in service to the plan. Energized by Jupiter in collaboration with Saturn, we are clearly seeing a new spiritual opportunity to fuse heart and mind as a group, to fuse and blend our energies, to make a difference in the world. Moved by the spirit of Aquarius, touched by the waters of life pouring through the group from members of an inner group of disciples, we are coming to know through living experience what life more abundant really is. It is multi-dimensional and our group, our group work is multi-dimensional as well. The idea of group extends from here to there and from there to here across the chain of being. The wonder and the beauty of it is group expression has begun and the golden light of the soul that we have envisioned pouring down upon us in us and through us is definitely present and definitely having an impact on us and on people we meet along the way. Thank you all. Thank you, Martin. Now we will hear from the group that has been coordinating different aspects of our work over the years. Annette Morgan, Judy Norman, Linda Myers, Martin and Michael, whom you've just heard from, Simon Biala Broda, Iris Spellings, and myself. Iris will open the conversation with some reflections on our shared experience. Thank you, Nancy. I think you forgot Linda too, Linda Myers. Who would have thought memes on social media to aid the externalization? Having spent much of my life studying the books, I've learned that all esoteric work is about service to the plan, and that the books written by Blavatsky, Bailey, Rorick are the foundation for the new work. They, they prepared us for this moment to come out of the books and to be living disciples, as DK always intended. How is it that this particular group of disciples was drawn together? It was not by invitation. It began for me by receiving the Phoenix letters and the call from the mountain, which were openly shared, and many of you may have received them too. Periodically, the call went out asking if we'd like to remain on the mailing list. At some point, we were asked if we wanted to step up and be part of an experiment without knowing much of anything about it. Those who resonated with it chose to remain with the group. Our souls brought us to this group service. The path of living discipleship is steep and the most challenging task perhaps is the call to purify ourselves, to live as a soul in our every expression, in every thought, word, action. We can think we're doing pretty good, yet viewing life under a microscope is like peeling away an onion. 
only to find another one and another and another. Service requires wrapping our mind around concepts beyond our current ring past knots. It requires trust to act as if, as well as willingness to allow the heart to open and the light to pour through in all its beauty and radiance. The result is immense joy and solemn gratitude. Thank you all. Thanks, Iris. I, I'd like to offer a few thoughts too um, of the experience, and that's the point. It, it's it's not just a theory anymore. We're living these times, and we're living um, the new into being through us. Um, I guess one of the things that stood out for me in the experience was the communion, the constant communion with our elder brothers, the guides in the ashram. Um, they would issue le regular letters and oddly I would find that they had addressed or taken up uh, things that I had been thinking about but not sharing with anyone, that they had addressed our thought and our questions. This was also um, followed up by direct questions. We could ask direct questions about things that we were concerned about in the world and, and our ability to serve and communications would come directly back addressing our, our concerns, but also placing them in and lifting them into a larger context of the plan working out, always lifted into that greater plan that we were serving, though not always as consciously as, uh, as we might intend. So this constant sense of communion, um, I think it, it, it augmented the growing telepathic sense of communion within the group and beyond the group, you know, to all of those who are serving in these times. I think we're all finding that there's, there's a subtle field that we're sharing together as we serve in this new and amazingly unprecedented time. And this communion with the ashram supports and expands it. I pick up on what um, Martin spoke of, Jupiter and that expansion, uh, that expansive energy that is carrying us like a wave into this greater sense of being. The other thing was the assignment itself that really blew us away. It took me ages to come to terms with what a meme really was. Um, and, and when it first came up in the instructions from the ashram, we, we were totally puzzled. Um, and, and then, but they led us so gently and never, never directed, but asked. Free will was always at play. And we were drawn by free resonance to each task that was asked of us. Um, this, and then we found that we, we had a group of people around the world who had never known one another, mostly hadn't met one another before, um, and speaking different languages. And we, we had to somehow or other do this task. So it was a little daunting to look at, but in retrospect, what genius, uh, to, def to design an assignment that would simultaneously draw forth the soul in everyone, draw forth their 
um, spiritual will and at the same time create a line of communication that could reach a wider audience in the world. Uh, at the time, it was mystifying. In retrospect, we're beginning to see the, the absolute genius behind it. Um, and one of the things that we were challenged with was moving from our familiar um, language, if you like, our, our, our familiar terms, and to use a universal language that could speak to anyone uh, in, a, in a wider audience. That at first was a surprising challenge. You know, we think we speak with one another and share with one another fairly universally, but we found that it had, you know, esoteric, the essence of esoteric knowledge to be presented to a general public in a way that could be understood. I'm reminded of a beautiful sloka from um, Super Mundane in which the great pilgrim is spoken of as having the gift of being able to speak simply to, um, to everyone and speaking to each in their own language and that his great simplicity was part of his great power in those when he first appeared. So I think um, the other thing that has been greatly illuminating has been that we're beginning to see the world through the eyes of the ashram, through our elders' eyes. In the weekly letters, they would speak a little about the world uh, and the events as they were unfolding. At the same time, that kept us in that view. It's so easy when we watch the suffering in the world to be to be grief stricken actually and to be reduced in, in sorrow for those who are suffering. But it's really important that we hold to the course and hold to the plan to relieve that suffering and not reduce our uh, our ability to do so by being lost in, in, in grief. I found that one of the biggest challenges and I think others have too. So thank you. That's all I'd like to share. Thank you, Judy. Uh, I would like to share something, please. And thank you, uh, everyone who is here. Um, I'd like to add to what uh, Nancy said in her introduction about our assignment. Um, that these uh, three cycles or waves of uh, spiritual memes were planned uh, by our elder brothers, with each one focusing on a specific theme that, as Judy said, we were challenged in language to make them accessible for a wide audience. Each theme was revealed only when the, when the, the, the theme we were working on was finished, just before the next cycle was to begin with wave one, with the first cycle of memes, the theme was an invisible bridge of light exists, which by joining two realms of consciousness together will precipitate a new age and a new kingdom of life on earth. This we had to ponder on. With wave to or cycle to of the memes. It was the soul, the kingdom of souls and the plan. And with the final phase, wave three, it was the Christ, his reappearance, his role. 
and the qualities of the spiritual kingdom. And in one of our messages, it said, these great sparks of light you have released into the new sphere have not yet reached all souls who can be touched by them, nor has the meaning of this experiment sunk into potentially receptive minds. But in time, it will as we continue without interruption with our present work. Thank you. My experience with the group was very challenging because I uh, had to learn a new computer program to help facilitate the creation of the memes. And I was not very used to using anything other than email on the computer. We were given a program that uh, showed up right away from a member of the group. And, um, and so in that program, we were able to do everything that we've done in the last years and even more since we can also do videos now. Working with this group to clothe the language of the memes. It was really an, a, an amazing opportunity to see, uh, to see disciple, disciples growing uh, enormously in self-forgetfulness and sacrifice of the little self uh, and recognizing the uh, the opportunity we had to use this technology that isn't that old actually, when you think about computer use and to use it for good and put out positive and beautiful, beautiful things for uplifting the world. It was really an experience uh, I've never had working in a group like this. It was, it, it is a world wide disciple. And as it's been said, we didn't know each other on a physical level and, but somehow our souls connected and love because we were under the umbrella and auspices of the ashram, enormous love poured through us and united us in a unity that was very new to me and powerfully uplifting. The group, the group shared and shares uh, a very clear responsibility of service to the plan and to this very moment that we stand on the cusp of the new time and the opportunity to join together with the new group of world servers in this beautiful push of new life into the, into the world. So it's been, I haven't words really to, to express to you how important this group has meant to me um, and the love that I, I share with this, this entity that has become the group disciple. And I'm very grateful that I've had the opportunity. Thank you.
Um, I, I, um, I, I will be very brief. After, after having studied um, esoteric teaching and also the Eastern teachings for many, many years, um, there was a growing desire um, after, after a while to have some some closer contact actually with the with the hierarchy and four years ago when I was um, asked to actually join this group and I got involved in it I am um, over o over the four years I have actually actually felt a much much closer contact actually with them, um, and um, and it 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 brings to my life um, real purpose, and I feel as if I am actually working much more consciously and and purposefully um, in line with the with, with the plan so my life is much richer having actually said that it's also extremely challenging in in many ways and on on um, other other levels emotionally and mentally at times socially but um it doesn't actually matter because I know I am actually connected and also being part of a, a group of, of souls who are really, really dedicated and very beautiful in many ways. The service is um, so satisfying. So, yes, that's it, really. Thank you. I'd like to add a, a few things to that. If I look back 20 years ago, this conversation we're having now would not have been possible, mainly because I was in a very different place. And we as a discipleship group around the world didn't have the level of coherence and mutual respect and understanding that exists now. And when I first began working inside esoteric groups, the whole concept of ascended masters had this air of distance to it. These were beings who were some, at a remote location. And then over the years, as I've learned that these are our elder brothers and sisters, they've traveled the same path that we are traveling now. They know what it's like to go through the, the trials and tests and tribulations of earth. They've actually graduated from this fourth kingdom, this fourth realm. Therefore, they're the perfect mentors. They now live in the fifth kingdom, which is the embodiment of the soul qualities. And so it, it's, a, it's a very loving relationship. It's, it's, it's respectful, but respectful in a very close and joyful way. And what I've realized is that the externalization of the hierarchy that we've read about all these years and the reappearance of the Christ, the externalization begins by us preparing the way in groups like the ones we're speaking about today. And we prepare by internalizing the qualities of the soul inside ourselves, inside our group, so that the group becomes a living, resonant field of soul qualities. And in this way, at a level of frequency, at a level of resonance, the fourth and the fifth approach each other. It's a reciprocal approach. So it is, it is, it's a very different approach rather than saying, oh my gosh, we've got to go meet with the masters. No, we are now cooperating with another center 
of consciousness and energy with inside the living planet. And that's what's changed for me. And being part of this group has helped me understand that what we're doing now, particularly on this call today, we're simply sharing field notes from the new normal. This is what we're expecting of ourselves in the coming years to work in close cooperation with each other, in close cooperation with the realm of souls. And by doing so, these two, the fourth and the fifth, eventually meet and merge. And a new center of light, a new portal is created through which the Christ presence is anchored within the etheric body of the planet. It's part of the journey to becoming the sacred planet. And so as well as distributing the memes and seeing the effect that it's had on a lot of people who need reassurance and signs of hope in these darkening times when they're going through bouts of despair and despondency, at a deeper level, we can see the planet bringing itself together. And so that's what's helped me keep everything in perspective. So it's not about a group getting in touch with masters. It's about the planet bringing itself together to take the next step in its evolutionary journey towards becoming a sacred planet. Just as for us, becoming a sacred person is having the Christ presence born within the cave of our own heart and born within the cave of the heart of humanity. And the group we're talking about today, this experiment, is one of those spaces in which Christ can be born within the cave of the group heart. So those are some of the field notes and some of the reflections I have. For me, this is the new normal, and we have to dare to live it. As several people have said, we're not just studying this. We're being asked to make the word flesh, which is the whole task of the Christ in his previous incarnation through Jesus, the word made flesh. Can we bring living discipleship into the world so that the qualities of the soul can be anchored in time and space and that we ourselves then eventually as humanity become the light of the world. So that, that's what I'd like to end on today is the, the task for humanity in cooperation with the fifth kingdom to become the light of the world. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. I'd like to invite um, any of the attendees, <laughs> any of our group members who may be present to um, share if they would like to. If you just um, raise your hand or click on the raise hand icon and we, <clears throat> We'll open up your mic if you would like to speak or anyone if you would like to share experiences of communion and cooperation with the hierarchy. Perhaps it's all been said. <laughs> it would be lovely to hear anyone's impressions. Thank you, Judy. Um, for me, the group has given me courage to embody a lot of things that <clears throat> I had been studying that was outside of sort of the realm if you will, it seemed, as Michael had said, it seemed like it was out there and not inside of me or put it into everyday practice. <clears throat> so it's given me the courage to embody this phrase that uh, I'm sure many of you know uh, from DK gave into Asa Jolie. And I quote, <clears throat> 
I am a messenger of light. I am a pilgrim on the way of love. I do not walk alone, but know myself as one with all great souls and one with them in service. Their strength is mine. This strength I claim. My strength is theirs. And this I freely give. A soul I walk on earth. I represent the one. And for me to have the courage to totally embody that, it's a very, very beautiful thing that I'm so very grateful for. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Al. Now, uh, Ellen, I think you're self-muted. Could you unmute yourself, Ellen? Not working? There, 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 finally. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> well, I just wanted to express my appreciation. I'm, I've been um, working with bringing the soul into education. Um, it's a guided work that I've been at for many years. And the first um, hint I got of your group was a Phoenix letter that I received um, about the importance of education, how it was the, of primary importance um, for to bringing in this new age. And it came at a time when I really needed encouragement. Um, for, for most of the world, the combination of soul and education doesn't uh, sit very well. And so it's, it's, a, it's an uncomfortable thing sometimes to bring them out there. And um, that uh, was very appreciated. I made a lot of copies of it sent it around to everybody. And the other thing I wanted to appreciate was that recently you talked about you talked about the three different um, areas of your memes and the central one was about soul. And that also came at a time when to, get, to have a daily inspiration about the soul was so important um, for me to keep at what I was doing. And um, I, I know I'm not alone, that there are many who've been um, supported, many of the new group of world servers that have found support through the work that you're doing and that you stuck to it and uh, did such a beautiful job. Uh, it's very much appreciated. Um, uh, I think, you know, I've been working with Alice Bailey's book about education and the new age and that was originally inspired me probably 20 or 30 years ago. And uh, I've, we've started a university uh, for nature-centered, soul-inspired education. And I, I want to thank you again for what you've been doing. And I'm so glad that it was kind of secret. You know, I didn't, couldn't quite pin down what this group was. It was inspiring. And now I feel, uh, having heard the history, and uh, I just feel appreciative, but also a, a, kind of a part of it. And thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ellen. We are all part of it, aren't we? We're all part of this great movement. <laughs> now, we're, we're getting a little short of time, but I know there's uh, Diane um, would like to share something. Uh, Diane, you, you can unmute yourself, I think. Yeah, um, good afternoon and good evening. Good morning, wherever we are, and blessings to all. I just wanted to uh, add that the call from the mountain um, was something I personally was looking for. I had been waiting for a call most of my life. What it was a call for, I didn't know <laughs> until it came. Um, through the uh, Arcane School, I came by the the uh, the letters from the mountain. Uh, being a part of this living discipleship 
has altered my life in ways that I cannot even explain. The coming together of the souls from different parts of the world for us to unite and harmonize and resonate the way we have, um, it, it's been a tremendous blessing. We've opened up and purified ourselves uh, in, in hope of helping humanity, the hierarchy, the Christ, to bring about this change, this shift in consciousness that we all are waiting for humanity to realize. Um, to be a part of the group, to extend myself in ways that I never thought I could. Um, as as uh, Judy had said, or one of the sisters had said, Nancy, I think it was, that we're all older, <laughs> not not young, but we've adapted to the technologies in ways that um, it, it, it would have never been possible in just in a normal life. Uh, it's been a tremendous blessing to know and come together with the souls that I know that I've known before. There's such a resonance uh, and such a love that we have developed between each other, and yet we've never met each other. Uh, there was a period of learning to trust that also was accomplished. There was a period of learning to understand the souls who reside in, in different forms to recognize and to understand um, how their lives and their experiences have brought them to this, this point in life and also wanting to change and alter and shift so that we all can be resonant with uh, our, our hearts and our minds. All of these things have been accomplished. The relationship with the hierarchy uh, has been expanded. It's, it's amazing how you can think a thought and within the letters that were received, were not within the letters just rece received, within the telepathic communication, the answer to the question is always there. And so just to be a part of this group is something that I could have never described, never imagined, but I am just so blessed to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. We'd like to have more sharing, but I realize uh, we have a, we're concluding with a meditation and we're going to run over time. Alexandra, I hope that's okay. Um, so we might um, move on to Annette. Thanks, Annette. Um, just a sh short note. Yes, we have a buffer of time before our next program. There was a question uh, that I reposted in the chat asking how this work could be supported and probably uh, overall information how those who are interested in your work could get in touch with your group. I think there's an email address and perhaps um, Martin, would you like to put the email address in the chat? And our we and the website is just if you if you put into your browser nwol.us, it will take you to the website. But perhaps Martin yes, you might yes, like I will I will put it into the chat. Yes. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Alexander. All right, we'll hand over to Annette, I think, now. Thank you, Judy. Actually, before we start the meditation, let us just pause for a few moments and make the mind quiet and still, just for a few moments.
we stand on, on the brink of the great turning of the tide. Holding the group field in a spirit of quiet joy, we are mindful of the stream of light and blessings pouring into the earth from higher worlds. With minds ever attuned to the peace and stillness of the soul, let us fall still and open our hearts to the downpouring love of the kingdom of souls.
to here with a sense of right proportion without illusion or distortion we listen carefully through the ears of the soul this is the moment to stand poised and ready to welcome the Christ light into the world the light appearing at the time of the solstice was an indication of what is to come a sign of the birth of new life on earth those who resonate with the sign will be drawn into the group of pioneering souls who will build the foundation of the coming civilization under the guidance of the Christ and his disciples the masters and initiates who will magnetize the core of the new world in due time the mother of the world will lift her veil and all will see through the eyes of the soul as the great light comes closer to earth our hearts beat in unison with the new song that will be sung by all who love let us fall quiet again opening wide the group heart to the love and light of the Christ
Love is the divine force passing through every link of the great chain. At the center of that love, we stand. And from that center, we go forth to love and serve. Let us pour forth the love of the soul to those within our immediate family circle. To fellow disciples and group companions, to the new group of world servers everywhere. To humanity as a whole. To our blessed earth and all therein. May the golden rays that issue from the heart of the sun pour forth and bathe our souls and the souls of all created forms. Within these forms, the life of God awakens and the power of God streams forth as will as dedication to the plan. As strength to work and give. May peace and peace and peace be everywhere. Thank you. Thank you, Annette. Thank you, everyone, for sharing with us today. And thank you to those uh, who have put uh, your comments in the chat uh, field. We will answer them um, as soon as we can. Thank you very much. And thank you, dear friends, for sharing with us today and putting those seats for our
collective group reflection in this full moon of Capricorn. And we continue holding our meditative space together this full moon and we invite you to join the coming webinars of the 2025 initiative you can see on the screen our schedule for the next few days and i want to especially invite you to join a preparatory meditation for another group experiment work meditation for the common good on the 29th at 9 30 p.m we'll have a preparatory meditation leading us to our month-long reflection on the topic of group observers search for truth in the age of disinformation and that webinar will be happening on january 15th following the new moon And please share your impressions from today's webinar via email. Unfortunately, we don't have much time left for our continuous reflection, but our group field will hold your impressions and we will share your comments with the group who shared with us today. Thank you.